All right, what's up Facebook? We're Amy and Andy of Sunshine and Rain Photography. We are the community directors for SLR Lounge. And? And we're super stoked <laughs> to be here with Jay Casario of Twisted Oak Studio. And he was originally going to be joined with his lovely and dear wife who runs the studio with him, but she is not feeling well this morning. So he is here solo. Yeah, but we're stoked to have you, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Yeah, I wish she was here. But uh, you know what? She's not too thrilled about being in front of a audience anyway. So <laughs> she, that's she okay. Be we'll get her later this year. Yeah, that's um, for sure. So uh, a lot of you guys already know Jay. Uh, he's been writing for SLR Lounge for a number of years, and uh, has some really awesome articles. Uh, if you haven't read them. Do yourself a favor after this and jump on slrlounge.com and search Jay Casario's name, C-A-S-S-A-R-I-O, and you're going to get some awesome content. Um, he has some uh, really, the ones that really stick out to me, there's a great one about um, just really how he got into the industry, um, why he values his connection with his clients. Uh, there's a, a awesome one on tilt shift and pretty it's another great one on uh, lens flare there's a really mm -hmm. cool one on lens flare yeah. as well so um make sure you guys check those out and we want to of course remind you guys you still have one more day to submit for the january right. uh wedding awards one day one day so make sure you get those submissions in the final day is tomorrow right that's right 31st um cool so yeah. hey, Back to you. What's up, man? <laughs> Nothing. I'm glad you pointed out. I, I at least had a few good articles over the years for SLR Lounge. <laughs> he is he is also a humble man. <laughs> they are. Uh, what do you got? Do you guys use the term "wicked awesome" still over there in the New Jersey area? Wicked awesome. I don't know. I'm just an I'm just an old guy around here. I don't, All right. I don't <laughs> Right. Well, they're awesome, so check them out. Yeah, that's great. But uh, anyway, and uh, you're you're actually at your studio right now. Yep, yep. Um, love that wall. In Summerdale, New Jersey. Yeah, this wall was uh, a project and a half. The whole studio was. So the, the studio was an old post office. Cool. So we had our, our work cut out for us when it came to remodeling. But a year and a half later... I think it finally looks half decent. Cool. I think that's actually, uh, I believe you wrote up a, uh, an article about that process too. Um, what's that process like? Um, you know, I think a lot of photographers out there are curious about, you know, maybe they um, have a studio in their home or, you know, they run it out of the trunk of their car, they go to their clients' homes. What's that, what was that process like for you and Sandy and really the rest of your team as you guys transfer? you know, made that transfer into a, an actual studio space. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, like you said, was just getting out of our home for client meetings. Uh, I think, you know, that works for people for a little while. Um, but then, you know, once you have kids, that was a biggie for us. Once we had our son, you know, inviting people in for consultations and trying to sell them on you know, expensive wedding packages, you know, and our son's running around screaming and one of us is taking turns, you know, chasing him down and tackling him to the floor and trying to make him stop screaming. It was, it just kind of made sense to go that direction of a studio. Um, and you know what? We weren't really sure if it was the right thing to do or not, but we did it. And the first studio was a small one. We, we leased out and it worked for a little while. Um, it was just like a, a shared space. We had a, a little little office room, and it was just strictly for meeting clients. Um, and then after a year, I think of that, a year and a half, we decided to start shopping around and looking around for a bigger place. And to be honest with you, the place we moved into, this, uh, this post office that we converted into a studio, it's actually bigger than what we need right now. And uh, we're making a decision whether we want to grow into it, which I think we will. Um, or, you know, we're kind of tossing around the idea of maybe finding somewhere else. But, dude, I put so much work into this place now. Late nights, uh, even the team, I mean, our photographers, we, it was 
repainting this place took like um, two months because blue walls with white paint on top. It was like four or five coats we needed. So every, you know, we would just have like pizza and, and junk food everywhere and we would just order out and everybody would be here painting. And it was, you know, it was a fun process, but it was so much work. So I would hate to leave, but it's a big space, man. I don't know the square footage, but we have a huge shooting space. And then, you know, the client space is, it's perfect for what we need as far as like client meeting space, but I'm not shooting too much here. Uh, none of us are. So we just have to figure out if we're going to stay here or not in the next year. But yeah, I would love to. Cool. Awesome. What would be, uh, if you had to give some advice to somebody who was uh, about to, you know, let's say they even had like a good stack of uh, savings to uh, get into a place, what would be, um, you know, other than like making sure you have enough money to do it, what would be uh, a couple of things you would uh, say, you know, in the way of advice for somebody? Yeah, good point. I guess that was your original question with the last one, but. Uh, no, that's great. It was good. Uh, it's good. It's cool to, to get those. Just keep uh, on track, man. Just yell at me when I start to no, drift off. You're perfect. You're, you got it. You got it, bro. <laughs> so the biggest thing, honestly, was this one was a huge jump in a monthly payment for us from the previous place. So we needed to make sure that financially it was going to benefit us and we could use it to our, you know, our benefit to make more money, not just have this extra big monthly payment. So, I mean, we pay close to $3,000 a month for this place. So it was a huge jump from where we were. Um, but now a year and a half later, you know, with remodeling and gearing the studio up to sell albums, sell, you know, prints like behind me, canvases all over the walls. Um, it is definitely turned into uh, a much better financial situation than if we were still at home. Um, it's very much worth it. You know, like I said, it's a little bit too big and we could move into somewhere smaller, but as far as the monthly payment goes and utilities and bills, it's yeah. still worth it at this price. And album sales we do we've you know we've made some business moves and changes too but um you know being able to have clients come in here into a studio rather than your home it's that you know you get more of that professional feeling clients come in and they feel like they're at a real business and you know you can still get that personal you know you know uh connection with them but at the same time it's just very professional i have so many albums now here that you know they can flip through and use for uh, designing their own so yeah it's it's a big big move and i think as long as you have a good game plan of how you want to use the studio then you know right. it, it'll work out and i honestly didn't think it, it would it, it actually worked out quicker than what i thought i thought it would take like a year before it actually started to become like a financial you know benefit to us but yeah it's it, it didn't take too long so it's so definitely, definitely so definitely you've seen a positive return as far as um you know when you do your uh in-person sales meetings um and your like client booking meetings it definitely gives off a more professional vibe yeah and the biggie which i forgot to mention is that we do reveal parties now and um just being able to have clients come in here just like uh, i just posted a blog post a few days ago um about uh, a couple that came in here and i'm about to post another one that they wrote a guest blog post about you know their experience with the reveal parties nice. and it's it's just huge man to be able to have them come in here and watch a slideshow on a big you know screen that you know the projector screen and it's such a different experience for them nice. and just you know if i didn't have the studio i wouldn't be able to do that i mean i'm sure i could add an addition onto my home or you know do it at home but it, this is this is what's worked for me. Cool. Uh, question off of Facebook from Wes. He was uh, he was curious if you thought about um, since you have space, you don't use renting some of that out. Yeah, that's definitely a direction we're thinking about going, and it's it more comes down to how much of a headache it's going to be, you know, right. compared to uh, anything financially. Um, just having constantly having different people in the studio. Um, and keep in, you know, you got to keep like a, a schedule to make sure, like, if we're having a reveal party, nobody's, right. so like you know, the, so there would be benefits to it. 
And I think a lot of people do make out good with that, but um, it's a new level. Of I don't really want to do it. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it could be, um, but yeah. as of right now, you know, I'm not going to go that way. Cool. Um, good question though, Wes. Good, th good thoughts. Um, so you uh, recently um, signed on with Leica. Um, and that's been a big, kind of a, a, a big rumbling in the industry. Um, how did how did that transpire and, and what are you stoked about that? What's your... Yeah, so that, I mean, I'll be honest, that's definitely the biggest accomplishment that I've had in my career, uh, no doubt. It's, uh, <laughs> it's something that I saw a gap in with their their business years ago but there wasn't a ton of photographers using their equipment for, for weddings you know there's a handful um a small handful but they didn't have if you look at their like ambassador program or any of their you know their social media feeds or the magazines they put out you could just tell that wedding photography wasn't on their on their radar whatsoever yeah so I fell in love with shooting their cameras years ago, and um, it became such a big part of my photography that I just set out three years ago to really get on their radar and start to work with them on different projects. So over the years, you know, I worked with them on different projects. I tested cameras out for them and early before they were announced, and you know, they started to slowly get on board with the whole wedding photography thing. And I'll be honest, they're still not 100% on board with it, but I think they, they're starting to see more of the benefit to maybe starting to go in that direction. And they have went in that direction. So that's what I represent to them. And that's what they approached me with, which is, you know, it was really cool to see because I did a lot of, you know, a lot of people know I put a lot of hard work into this over the years, getting them to see the importance of it and also getting them to see me as, you know, a way into the wedding industry. And they did. They came to me with a contract and uh, offered me an ambassador program or uh, a partnership. And yeah, it's still pretty early. You know, we're still a couple months in, but so far, I mean, we're really just kind of winging it. it. You know, it's not like any like a Nikon or Canon ambassador program where they have everything in place and this is how it works. It, this is like like is like working with a a mom and pop shop. You know, they're very uh, yeah yeah very relaxed about things and you know and very unique in how they run their business so they so they also i mean it, it'd be fair to say and i think that you you've even said this to us too is that uh they they uh have a very personal approach like they they have a lot of care for you as as a person not just because you you know operate you know a big studio and uh you know kick out all these weddings every year and, and that kind of stuff like they like you as a person they like your style um your relationship um you know you and sandy and all that kind of stuff yeah that was i mean one of the biggest things that i noticed with them early on was that even as i was you know nobody to them just reaching out to them with different questions and hey here check out my work um i love shooting your cameras it, it was i could see there was more of a a personal approach to our business and a caring approach rather than what I noticed over the years of other camera companies where they're just big companies and you're just another photographer they're out there in the market um, like it would you know if I had an issue with a with a camera of mine I mean they would just take care of it as if you were dropping it off locally to you know a local you know camera shop and the engineer would, that was working on it would, would call me directly and say, hey, here's what I found. I'm gonna fix it up. I'm gonna overnight it back to you. And it was just like, wow, man, this is pretty neat to see the way that they run their, their company. Um, so yeah, now especially with me being, you know, we partnered up and gonna start, you know, doing more with in the wedding industry with them. Um, it is. It's pretty cool to see that we're just kind of customizing this program as we go and and see how it's working and different ways we can change it, but. So far, man, I mean, they take really good care of me, and I'm really, really happy with it. That's awesome. And so, um, what what uh, what's your what's your favorite? Um, I guess uh, I mean, what, what camera? What like a camera do you find yourself <laughs> uh, the most during a wedding day? 
So it's kind of it's kind of uh, gradually changed, which started with you know I've shot Canon along with Leica up until you know it was first Nikon, then I shot Canon, um, and then it was you know I shot the M for the past three years, and then I I got to one of the first projects I got to do with Leica was when they designed and were about to announce the SL their their mirrorless camera. They asked me to test it or pre-test it and review it for them. So that was pretty cool. You know, a couple of months, three or four months before they announced it. So I got to see that camera early on. And then, you know, it wasn't something that I saw fitting in to my photography at the time. But about, I guess, four or five months ago, um, I tried it again and it really fit in because you can use the same lenses as I can with the M. And now I, I mainly shoot with the SL, but the M is still, I shoot them side by side. And together, I mean, from my style of shooting, it works out beautifully and it's, it's an awesome combination. But the rangefinder is still, I would say, my favorite camera. It's just such a unique shooting experience. And it's funny because there's a lot of photographers who have never shot with one. I mean, I never did until it was put in my hands. And, you know, we hear a lot of people say that it's overpriced and it's, you know, there's nothing real special about it. And then, you know, so many photographers that have tried, as soon as I let them try it, it's, it's a whole new world. So <laughs> there's so, so many photographers that after trying my M, you know, M240 or MP or the M10, now they own their own. When, uh, I mean, you guys might have heard of Bud Johnson. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he was one who uh, didn't take too long for him to start scrambling through his his uh, gear to see what he could sell off and buy an M. And now he's he's really <laughs> big into big into shooting with Leica. Cool. Awesome. Um, speaking of uh, Bud too, you guys have uh, done workshops together uh, before, right? Yeah, me and Bud, we uh, we did a couple workshops together, and then. You know, uh, we kind of do things differently with our businesses, and it's a good opportunity to um, for workshops because it shows anybody attending just you know different approaches, he run, different ways he runs his business. Um, and, you know, over the years of doing workshops together and knowing each other, I've we've both kind of changed a little bit to be more similar. I've kind of taken on some of his uh, ways of doing things and vice versa, but. Yeah, we've done pretty good with doing workshops together and you know it's he's a much better speaker than i am and i mean he's he's very you know you can sit there and listen to him talk all day long with me it's like i'm not the best at public speaking or all i want to do is you know it's just i get out there and talk about what i know and try to make it interesting but the two of us i'm the boring guy he's the he's the more fun one so it's uh it's a nice combo for workshops well, I'm, I'm gonna have to call you out on that one because uh, Amy and I actually, <laughs> we actually uh, had the opportunity to hear you speak at, at the Leica store in Vegas last year, uh, right. Right, around, right around WPPI, and uh, that, that was amazing. Yeah, um, definitely. And uh, I think I think a lot of people um, really had like an awesome uh, experience um, hearing you talk about. Um, your your experience getting into photography, um, your relationship with your mom, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. really how you take that, um, you know, I guess what you've learned from that, um, what you've experienced through that, and how you take that into your relationship with your clients, which is, I think, one of the things that you're really known for, which is cool that I, I like how, you know, you've been speaking about like a, you know, sort of, they, they obviously have that like similar style of view of like really caring about the person and um, you know really pouring into them so and I know that you um, you can see it in, in the articles that you write um, how you really pour your heart into into everything you do um, you know from your relationship uh, you know to your wife and your kid to your business to your photographs so um, that's really cool um, you guys yeah, um, really. so Very if you guys special. out there in Facebook land get the opportunity to hear Jay. Um, and I, I know you're, you'll be at WPPI. It's uh, definitely worth it, mm -hmm. more than worth it. And you, you know, it's really, um, 
life changing for a lot for um, people when they when they get to hear you speak. So um, we're stoked you're going to be at WPPI to uh, drop that knowledge and really just your heart. So that that's cool. We like to see that. So um, yeah, um, and Emily, we'll... but, but maybe you could speak a little bit about um, you know maybe just your relationship with your clients, like why that's important to you. Well. Last year at WPPI, that was pretty funny how that all played out because I didn't put that together until the day before. Um, because when they first asked, asked me to speak at WPPI, I really thought they wanted me to go in more of like a technical route. And the day before the lecture I was supposed to give, they reached out to me and said, whatever you do, we don't really want you to talk about gear. We want you to talk about more about your relationship with your clients and how you run your business. And I was kind of shocked by that. Uh, but it does speak a lot about, you know, how they run their business and how similar it is to mine. Um, it was pretty cool. And it was definitely me in the hotel room the entire day before just trying to figure out how to throw together a presentation. So, I mean, it, it, I did, I thought it went pretty good, but I mean, for a last minute throw together of a, of a presentation. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys coming out. Um, hopefully this year will go just as smooth. Yeah. Um, so what do you have um, as far as what's going on for you at WPPI? What what can people come uh, check out? So last year we just did the lecture, um, which was pretty cool because it was a little bit unique. As you guys know, it was held in a restaurant. Uh, everybody got served food. It was kind of more of like a little more closed environment. Um, this year we're going to do, they kind of left it up to me, which was nice. Um, they wanted to do more of like a workshop, get people out shooting. So we're going to head out off the strip a little bit. There's a nature preserve. We're going to head up. We're going to do that. We're going to head out there for a couple hours. Everybody's going to get to shoot whatever Leica cameras they want, any, any type of Leica equipment they want, um, bring it with them. I have Mark and his wife uh, who run ShopKit. They are going to be modeling for, for, the, for me at the workshop, which is pretty cool. Mark and his wife, uh, Alyssa, so they're coming in from Australia. So he had hit me up about places to stay and, you know, my experience at WPPI. And I was like, well, hey, man, why are you coming? Why don't you and the wife come model for me out in the, out in the desert? Nice. So it took a, little, took a little convincing, but, yeah, it'll be, be pretty cool to get him up there. And, you know, a lot of people are fans of Shock It, so it'll be, it'll be pretty cool to see. Nice. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to shoot, and then we're going to go back to that same restaurant, which is right near that you know the like a store out there in Vegas and uh, do the same thing get some get everybody get a little bit to eat and I'll do a little bit about post-production a little bit uh, similar to what I did last year talk a little bit about my backstory and how I got into photography and then how I you know approach you know my relationship with my clients so yeah it'll be it'll be a lot bigger and more involved than last year but yeah I'm looking forward to it it'll be pretty cool awesome and uh, outside of the, the WPPI zone, um, you had a workshop with um, Bud and James Day recently. Um, do you have any other ones coming up this year? So we did. We, we have a bunch, man. It's, it's pretty funny. Like last year was the first year I said, you know what, let me experiment a little bit with the whole workshop scene. And I wasn't too sure if I wanted to go to direction, but now with the partnership with Leica, that's they're putting a lot of emphasis on that. So right now, if you go to the Leica, you go to Leica Camera USA and then click on the Leica Academy, link at the top, uh, they do all their workshops through what's called the Leica Academy. And I think mine, all of my workshops this year are gonna pretty much be run through there. Um, so if you click on there now, there's two workshops up there that are coming up. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to be working with them and having them, you know, help me and host those workshops. Um, I mean, because I, you know, me and Bud did a few. James came down for one, but it's it's a ton of work. So to have them also helping me, you know, promote it, uh, do a lot of the back end work. It's 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 pretty nice. So that's that's cool. Um, we thought. Uh, oops, sorry, oh, no. just smack. Your <laughs> um, we thought we'd uh, head over for a few minutes over to your profile on SLR Lounge uh, so we could check out some photos. And uh, I'm gonna share our screen here. Talk 
Okay. Oh. Well, one thing that I did <laughs> want to say is that your photos show so much of the connection that is so important to you. So I just uh, would love to hear a little bit more about that. About. Um, yeah, well, I. That was another question I kind of skipped over, Amy. You're supposed no, to yell. No, that's but. okay. Yeah, we just. It's rad, so we'd like to hear about it. So. I do. I put a lot of time and effort into getting to uh, not only know my clients, but uh, know their backstory, know their relationship, and you know, from the time that I meet with them the first time, um, till you know, well after their wedding. Uh, my goal is ultimately to get to know them as best I can, and the benefit to that is, you know, not only the obvious of just getting to to know our clients, and you know just to make it more enjoyable, but also because it helps me to tell their story better. And me and Sandy both realized that a, a few years ago. But getting to know our clients, you know, the more we know them, the better we know how to anticipate different things throughout the day. We know how important different moments are. Um, you know, we used to go into a wedding day meeting the clients for the first time sometimes face to face on their wedding day. And not knowing them, you know, you don't really, it's tough to photograph them and tell a story. Uh, the more you know them, you know, it, it's like trying to write a book about uh, someone's life and you, you've just met them for the first time. It's the same thing. I take the same approach with photography. I, I got to know them and they have to be willing to open up to, to us and get, you know, let us in. Um, and I think it's why, you know, I wrote a, uh, I think a Facebook post the other day about access being granted or access granted or something like that. And it is. I mean, they're they're letting us into their lives, and it's it's a unique way to uh, you know it's a unique approach to wedding photography. And you know, I'm not the only one, obviously, that does it that way. But it's what I found that works the best for my approach and our way of telling a story. Um, we know who everybody is the day of the wedding. We know the relationships. We know you know good relationships, bad relationships, and that couple there, I mean, like a lot of couples, they, um, I, me and Sandy end up becoming close friends with them afterwards. And this couple here, Matt and Amy, that's their most recent blog post. I think you guys shared it in the, the Facebook post on yeah. the community or something else. But we're, I mean, we're very close friends with them now. I mean, uh, I honestly will be friends with them for as long as I can imagine. Taking pictures of their, you know, their family or just the two of them as they, have anniversaries. We're going. I mean, uh, we're vacationing the Maine next year to take their first year anniversary shoot. So it's uh, it's pretty cool how we get to, you know, it's not just wedding photography and you know, weddings over and it's done. It's it's uh, we put a lot of heart and a lot of time into you know, uh, getting to know our clients and you know, tell their story. So yeah, it's uh. It is. It's a lot of work, and it's it's a lot of time, uh, but at the same time, it makes doing this a lot more rewarding. Nice. Absolutely. Um, just just uh, I know you touched on that uh, photo. You said uh, Matt and Amy. Um, yeah. is, there, is there another fo uh, photograph on on your profile here that really stands out to you? Uh, that kind of is a good representation of all that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, that one example, I mean, uh, in almost a little bit of a different direction is that very top left one, the black and white one. Yeah. They were they were a, a client that flew me out to Los Angeles. It was the night, it was January 30th, so the, the day before, the day before New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I got to know them pretty good from, you know, across the country. And you know, you know, tons of phone conversations and getting to know about you know their life and talking to both of them. And then they flew me out a couple of days early, and I hung out with them. We went out to dinner, went out to lunch, and then you know their biggest thing was they didn't want any type of direction. They didn't want me to be hands on whatsoever while photographing them. They wanted me to have a very raw photojournalistic approach to shooting their wedding. 
and we put a lot of time into the prep work for that you know making sure that they knew exactly what they needed to do to get that done and not if i hadn't known them taking the time to get to know them you know not being able i didn't really communicate with them throughout the day and that's what they wanted um you know before and afterwards there was you know it was back to being friends and you know you know that whole that whole thing but it was the day of the wedding there was little communication and i knew what was important i knew who was important and i shot the entire wedding without being hands-on zero directing you know zero posing this wasn't posed this was just them walking down the street and you know like i said they they knew what they were doing you know they put a lot of time into paying attention to details and i just had to be prepared to you know always be on my toes and try to take a creative approach to every shot i took of them nice that's awesome and then another one another one uh i mean they're all so unique man it's uh you know even the the third one in uh from the top yeah she so she is uh they're getting married this year and she is a uh she runs a fashion site she's a fashion blogger a lifestyle blogger and i've worked with her a lot uh, leading up to this point you know uh it's we've got to know each other a good amount i've got to know her soon to be husband and you know even just their engagement shoot knowing the backstory you know he's a, he's a lineman so just planning things around that you know we, we took a lot of shots of him climbing a telephone pole with, with her on his lap and knowing how much she's in the fashion you know how many outfit changes she was going to have that day um yeah. and photographing them in a way that you know he's more of a rugged guy and she's more of you know very fashion oriented and it's you know knowing that and then knowing their backstory it made you know that shoot i mean there's so many awesome shots that i love they love and yeah it's it's pretty important for us man that's awesome yeah i think that uh you know it your your photographs um uh, they have a lot of soul to them and that and then, you know just hearing you know even those little few stories you can definitely see why that is um and uh i'm, gonna, I'm going to uh come back to you but um another um thing you're you're kind of uh i guess known for is um your style um the style of your of your photographs like the look of them and i know that's something that you put a lot of time uh into developing could you speak about that a little bit yes i mean everybody listening knows how important editing is in post-processing and finding a style that you feel fits your vision or you know the way that you remember when you took that photograph and you know that's probably a lot of photographers the biggest struggle i know it was mine the first couple of years and you know just the struggle to get photographs to look the way you want them to look and using the software uh, whether it's lightroom or capture one or or alien skin yeah but this guy right here um it's uh it's something that's crucial and you know very important and i spent a lot of time focused on that my first few years and i did i you know through hours and hours and hours of you know experimenting and really focusing on getting a look that represented what i saw when i took that picture and how i see things when i when i shoot you know it's uh my editing style is a huge part of my photography and it uh you know, I don't, I personally don't think it's all that unique. Um, to me, it just, it's part of, you know, my work and, you know, how I, you know, it, it represents the way I, I see things, but I don't feel like it's all that unique. I know a lot of people say it stands out to them, which is great. I love hearing that. Um, but yeah, it's, it can be, can be a lot of work at times. Um, every image that I put on social media, or on my, um, it does go through a process and you know it's 
it's a unique approach to, to doing it, but Alien Skin has been a huge part of that and using their software. Um, and, you know, I still use Lightroom. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's also been a great teaching tool because, because of a lot of photographers do struggle with editing. Uh, I have been able to, you know, I, I love that side of it. So I do teach a lot of people about the editing side of it. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, so as we kind of, uh, wrap up a little bit here, um, just want to give people you know, the best uh, opportunity or the best way that they can connect with you. Um, so you said to uh, check out your workshops coming up, go to the Leica website. Uh, yep. So if you go to like uh, camera USA.com okay. at the top, there's uh you can see Leica Academy. I think it is Academy, AKA, -A, what do you spell it? Um, and yeah, click on that. You'll see upcoming workshops with them. Okay. I'll be at WTTI, which, they haven't, we're working on it now, the past few days of getting it up on the WPPI website for open for registration. And hopefully we're going to get that done today, maybe tomorrow. Um, but we're going to max out at 20 uh, attendees. So as soon as I, as soon as we get it out there on the WPPI website, I'll get you guys to share it. I'll share it and uh, cool. try to get that filled up. And yeah, that's right now. That's my my main focus is that is WPPI because I you know I do I I, I love going out there, I love heading out there, you know, getting to see you guys, getting to see everybody. I don't see all that that often, and yeah. I love that you know having people come out to the workshop. So yeah, for sure. And um, uh, Instagram or uh, Instagram or Facebook or both. What are you on? Yeah, more? both. Uh, so have me. You can follow my work on Instagram. You can follow my work on Facebook. Also, the the studio, which you know we have uh, six photographers that that work for Twisted Oaks. We have a Twisted Oaks Instagram account and a Twisted Oaks Facebook page, where it's you know everybody's work together. And then plus, you know, me and Sandy each have our own Instagram account. Um, I also have a personal website, which is jakeasario.com, where I kind of put. Uh, I'm going to start putting more of Leica related, you know, stuff on there. Um, and I've always kind of kept my personal stuff separate from Twisted Oaks, but yeah, anybody that hasn't checked that out can, can follow my stuff on there as well. That's a, that's a legit number of social media, uh, accounts yeah. to manage, man. Props <laughs> for that. Because <laughs> it ain't just me, man. It ain't just me. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because if, yeah. uh, if Cecilia is watching us right now, uh, me and her, were just going over posting to the Twisted Oaks account this morning. She's one, of my, she's one of my photographers who, who runs the Twisted Oaks account. And, uh, and yeah, we were just going over that this morning. So, yeah, man, it's a lot, and it, it works out somehow, but it all comes together nicely. Because you're an awesome human, man. Yeah. Um, uh, also appreciate it. Uh, one last question, uh, Mark just posted. Uh, he he posted this right after you were talking about, um, you know, your editing style or the style of your photographs. You know, um, he said, uh, "How do you edit in that sort of style?" That's his biggest struggle. And I know you talked a little bit about, you know, you use you use Lightroom. You kind of developed your own uh, presets in there. You use some Alien Skin software. Um, what I guess what you know, I mean, that might not be the easiest question to answer, but um, what what would be your rec you know sort of your recommendation for somebody who's really trying to hit that group and figure out, you know, like what what their photographs should look like. How do they connect that to their their own style, their own brand? If that makes sense. No, it definitely does. And Mark, I mean, the biggest thing really, you know, is to get to know the software you're using. And, you know, that's easy to say to a degree, but I mean, Lightroom itself is so involved. I mean, once you really get and get to learn and dig into like the nitty gritty of using a tone curve and um, using, you know, split tones and uh, everything and, and really breaking it down. And same with Photoshop and, and Alien Skin. But the more you know about it and know how to use it and tweak it, the more that you can manipulate the colors um, and the style that you want to have. So, you know, that, that alone, I mean, that sounds like it's a huge process in itself. So what I'm getting at is that there's a lot of presets out there that people use. And I think if presets can be a crutch to a degree, um, but there's preset systems out there 
like Visco, like SLR Lounge, um, that were big, uh, big helpers to me for teaching myself how to use software like Lightroom, um, because they like with SLR Lounge, like you can click on the the different things, like how to crush blacks, how to crush highlights, how to get minty greens or you know warm warm highlights, and you can click on just those things, and you can see what is being done in Lightroom to create that look, just that very little specific thing. And, you know, that all those things added together, you know, can create that style and what that image looks like at the end. So, you know, there are ways to use preset systems as a learning tool rather than a crutch. And, you know, a lot of people have said like, hey, you should really, like people have pushed me a lot to, uh, I would love to sell my presets. That I, I've created my own presets over the years. And that's what I use for the Twisted Oaks, use for myself. But I know from I know for myself, using presets that are just being sold as presets, they've never helped me. You know, they give you that look, and that, and that's it. That's all you get out of it. So I just uh, have no desire to sell my preset, and I'd much rather people put the time into purchasing either the SLR Lounge preset system or even Visco because they have a, a toolbox that does the same exact thing. And as long as you can use it as a learning tool, then, you know, there's a, you can get a lot out of that stuff. So, yeah, that's what I recommend is just hitting up either one of those. Great. Great question, Mark. And that's a, that's an awesome answer. Um, Got to know your tools. Uh, well, uh, we've uh, almost occupied you for an entire hour. So uh, really appreciate that, Jay. Awesome. And, um, Thanks for joining us, and we'll have to get you back on with Sandy. Our best to her. Feel better, Sandy. Yes. And yep, yep. I'll let her know. And uh, yeah, hey guys. Not only well, if you guys, Sandy, if you guys but... have a have a chance, check Jay out at WPPI. You won't regret that. Make the trip out just to see him. It would uh, make your trip worthwhile. And um, like a camera USA, see what he's got coming up. Yeah. And we love you, Jay. We love you, Sandy. We love you, Facebook world. And we hope you have the most beautiful rest of your day. Yeah, thank right, you, everybody, for joining in and listening to me flap my mouth for a little bit. So thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Yep.